What's up guys, Matacaster here, and today we are back in CMS 18, and today is also the Daytona 500. And I will be watching the Daytona 500 later today, but uh, in celebration to commemorate the Daytona 500, I found something uh, in the junkyard. You guys have got to see this. So there I was just poking around in the uh, junkyard trying to find barn maps, and what did I fall upon but a vintage, let's get the info here. 1989 Chevy Illumina stock car, cup car. How cool is that? That is some vintage, that would have been Winston Cup era <laughs> NASCAR goodness that I think we need to, that we need to do something with. We bring this thing back to its former glory. It's really not in too bad a shape if you look at the details here. Uh, as far as the global body condition, it's 100%. The frame's 100%. Interior's 100%. While well, there's not much of an interior when it comes to these cup cars, I suppose. But there is some stuff that uh, just right off the bat needs attention. And I figure today's Daytona 500. Let's go ahead and take this and move it over to uh, move it to our garage and get going on this one, guys. And here we are back in our garage, and this is our cup car. It looks, I mean, this is a mod. I will right off the bat say that. It is a mod, but it is a very well done mod, if you ask me, by the looks of this. Overall, this thing is really not bad shape. I mean, I guess it ended up in the junkyard because it was not up to spec anymore and being 1980s. But uh, you could still have a lot of fun with one of these uh, club tracks or something like that. But yeah, that being said, let's get it over. Well, let's do our diagnostics first. See what diagnostics we can do with it. Get out our examine tools. There's no OBD2 port. I knew there wouldn't be, but you never know. Sometimes with mods, uh, things can be a little bit different, which is fine. Let's do our fuel pressure test here and see what we get. It's looking, uh, yeah, not great. Let's uh, try to do a compression test, see what that gives us. It is turning over, which is nice. And yeah, the uh, engine needs a little needs a little more tension. Uh, let's go ahead and do our multimeter here and see what we get. Guys, I hope you guys are doing good. It's been a little while, I know. Uh, as uh, some of you know that have watched for a long time, watch this channel, know I actually do restore classic cars in real life. And winter gets busy. Uh, alternator, yeah, yeah, we're going to need some attention there. Let's see... Let's see, do we want to do anything else? We don't need to check the tires. Yeah, I think we're I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and take it to the test path, see if it will fire up. Let's check the oil first. Don't wanna. Yeah, there is no oil. Which makes me wonder, is there an oil pan? Let's take it over to the lift. Let's just get a good look underneath it and see what we're working with. Car lifter A. But yeah, I've been real busy with cars. Um working on. Well, okay, up in the air it goes. Let's go one more step, get a look at what we're working with underneath. Look at those headers. Man, this mod even has the side exit exhaust. This is a, this is a really good mod, and the body's all tied together a lot like it was in these vintage uh, Winston Cup cars. That is very cool. Now, we do have an oil pan and everything, so let's put oil in it and see... Let's see, this is an actual real life. This is where the oil tank is on these. Uh, let's try to put oil in it and see if uh, we can take it to the test path and see what we can find out. Pop the hood here. Get some oil in there. Hopefully we're not just wasting oil. Hopefully it'll run enough to do a test with. Okay. Shut the hood. Let's send you over to, not dyno, test path. There we go. Okay, here we go, test path. Let's see what we get here. Yes, proceed. All right, we're inside the cup car. This is very cool. Look, it looks nice in here. Okay, here we go, apply brakes. And obviously those need work. Let's try the rear brakes, see what we're working with. Press and hold. And yeah, definitely need some work. 
We're gonna find out what our suspension is like. They even have the tilted tachometer, just like they did back in the uh, classic cup cars. All right, move forward one more. Yeah, suspension front is about 50%. Rear is even worse. It's not a horrible car, it just needs to be freshened up. And that's exactly what we're here to do. Let's move it over to the dyno, see what we start out with. Get our baseline numbers here. Okay, let's start the dyno test. Run dyno, the factory engine power. 665, 4590, 856 at 3105. Now, I don't remember the specs, recall the specs of the late 80s, early 90s era. Yeah, we've only got 336 over 446 pound feet. So we've definitely got some uh, losses here, right about half. So we need to fix that. Now to start with, what I wanna do, and I'm excited to do, cause I haven't, I haven't done this mod before, uh, is get the drivetrain out to be able to get the engine out because that's what we really need to work with here. And they're calling this left rear fender. That's cool. And sometimes you'll find that with the mods. They'll, they'll have things called, you know, different, different names for different things like that. It's just the way, just the way the mod works. Flip around, get this drive shaft off of here. Cool. Now we can get to the starter. Grab this gearbox off of here. And there we go. That's good enough. Well, we'll go ahead and take this out now. Don't have to worry about it. When it's on the engine stand, it's a little easier to do here. Get this throw out bearing, or no, clutch plate. We already got the throw out bearing. And then flywheel. You get that oil we just put in back out of there. And there goes our fresh new oil. All right, that can go back. Now we can bring this down. And even though it tells me that the frame condition is 100%, I'm still gonna run the welder just to make sure, just to be 100%. Don't have to worry about anything. Use equipment, yes, all right. It did let me use it, so apparently it did something, possibly. So let's go ahead and take the engine cover off of here and get ready to remove. Let's go ahead and pull out the radiator. Get that out of here. And then I think we're going to... Oh, look at that, the battery. I was looking for the battery. It's actually back here in front of uh, the uh, right rear tire, which is actually there in real life. They're over here. But maybe in this era, maybe somebody knows that it is maybe it is over there because they are located down there but in the modern era they're right in right up in there all right as if you really wanted to know that in case you really wanted to know that <laughs> and then um looking up here they've got th this mod builder really knows what he or she is doing because they got the uh the different brake um uh, brake master cylinders to be able to adjust the um what do you call it brake bias so that's really cool that that's in there too Let's bring the engine crane over. Lifter A. Then we take that engine out, pull out the engine, mount the engine, there we go. And cool, you can go back. Won't need you for a while. Let's take a look at anything else we need to worry about in here. On the top side, now everything looks like we've got it all. Very nice. Let's see, can we open up the trunk area? We can, and there is the fuel cell. This is, again, very accurate. Very well done. Now, there is your uh, fuel inlet, and then the vent, the overflow. Very cool. I'm impressed, I gotta say. On to the engine. Let's go ahead and just start pulling things apart. Now, if this were to be a car that would race in a series, you wouldn't want to do a lot of performance parts because they would be spec built. The engines would be very, very strictly spec'd out. 
and you wouldn't be able to put any performance or aftermarket perform you know anything that's not in the rule book unless you can get away with it pull off the distributor rotor the distributor the coil let's get this fan off of here get it out of the way yeah I hope you guys are doing well it feels good to be back it's been probably what about a month now I apologize I apologize I have been very busy I promise you that much get that pulley off of there water pump get you out of here timing cover get to the timing set in here chain you gotta go cam gear and get to this fuel filter here up here to the engine head cover been getting some comments I've been seeing dude your voice is putting me to sleep dude this is this is too chill that's the point this is a laid-back game I come I like to play this game to chill so I'm just gonna go ahead and talk chill and be chill I see a lot of people that like it but then there's those comments that are like dude you need to be more exciting <laughs> there's one comment I saw is like the Bob Ross of uh, car mechanic simulator that is a huge compliment I loved it I don't know if he was trying to compliment or not but anytime you uh, bring out the name Bob Ross in comparison I'm gonna take that as a compliment get these push rods out of here but no I'm not too worried I don't get too hung up on the comments I'm just happy you guys are here whether you like it or not just happy you're stopped by let's get this exhaust manifold off which looks more like headers to me but that's what they want to call them that's just fine engine head cover or engine oh come on now engine head there we go lots of carbon build up in there let's see that there's an engine head cover get this off of here and then get to the rocker arms But yeah, I've been enjoying, I've been really enjoying the uh, the community and what we're building here. And over 20,000, I never thought I'd get there. Uh, just as, it didn't seem like, uh, like I didn't, you know, I didn't have the metrics in my favor as I don't regularly upload. You know, I just kind of, you know, I don't want to like force anything because then it's going to come across as force. Like if I'm constantly feeling like I need to upload then you know it would, I feel like it would come across in the videos I have you know watched some gamers that have done that that feel like they need to keep on the grind and you know you start to notice it wear on them I don't want this to be that this is much more of an organic laid-back chill type of channel all right let's pull this engine head off but I appreciate you guys being patient like that and allowing me not getting on me too hard about getting videos out constantly I do have a lot of things going on in real life outside of this therefore I get to it when I when I can I really do because I really do enjoy it and I enjoy talking to you guys and seeing your comments let's pull this rod cap off get this piston out this engine teardown is going fast probably because I've just been rambling through the whole thing so I'm just gonna go ahead and speed up now and get all these pistons out of here and we're gonna pull this crankshaft out of here I did have a few questions people were asking me how do you remove parts without the camera zooming in you just go and you hold right mouse button if you're playing on PC or pardon me left mouse button just hold it if because if you click on it it zooms in so that is how that's done for those that were curious we gotta get this engine block off of here there we go let's get it over to the bench and see what we can repair looking like we're repairing quite a bit of things all right I'm just gonna make my parts list now just by right-clicking on this it will add for those who do not know will add it to the parts list 
for when I go shopping. It sure makes things a lot easier on me because then it's all just laid out. Exactly what I need. Cam gear fuel filter. I'll just get all new rocker arms. And push rods and spark plugs. All right, so I just got done shopping and bought some uh, performance parts for this thing because we're not going spec. This will be a fun, like, track car, you know, like uh, track day fun car. So here we go with the engine build. Let's get our crankshaft in there. Get our crankshaft bearing retainer caps. Get those cinched down. And then we get our third one here. Start with our performance piston. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit and get all these installed. All right, now we can put our oil pan on. Get that all tightened down. Oil filter. Ah, we forgot an oil filter. We'll just go right over here. Get out of the power boost section. Filter. It'll be the V8 overhead valve. That one right there. I always forget something. Very common on this channel if you're not familiar. <laughs> and we will rotate our engine over. Beautiful. Let's build out the front end here. Get our performance crankshaft in there. Cam gear. Timing chain. And our timing chain cover. There we go. Crankshaft pulley. Water pump. Then we'll do our water pump pulley. Let me double check. Is there a performance water pump? I don't know. Let's find out together here. Nope. Comes up with nothing. Okay, cool. Because I want to buy everything performance for this engine that I can. And so far, I believe I have. Yeah, I even went with performance power steering pump. As well as a performance alternator. Wonder what the difference really is. I mean, I guess maybe more high performance bearings in there to make it spin a little freer. And radiator fan. Now we can build up the important parts over here. Let's go ahead and throw our fuel filter in. Our ignition distributor. Throw that on. And our coil. I'm not going to build up the distributor yet. Well, I'll throw the rotor on because we don't have spark plugs to tie it to yet. And a performance head. This will be one fun little track car for sure. Let's get our push rods in. And our rockers. Rocker arms, I suppose, is what they call it. And there we go. We can go ahead and put our engine head cover on. Tighten that all down. Put our spark plugs in. Well, let's go ahead and throw on our performance exhaust manifold. That is definitely headers. But they can call it manifold if they like. And our spark plugs. There we go. Now I'm going to build out the other side. And there we go. That side is done. Let's go ahead and do our intake manifold, which I was surprised they didn't have a performance intake manifold for this engine. At least not one that I could find. But, oh well. We did find a performance carburetor. 
obviously. And a performance error. Filter. Get this cover on and our bolt in and we can build out the rest of the ignition here. I'm gonna put our little clips on. I always forget these. Not anymore, actually. I've, I've got a pretty good streak of not forgetting these. <laughs> and our wires, performance wires. Of course, that does it. That is one gorgeous looking engine. I like it, but we're gonna leave it there for right now and take care of the front suspension. Well, we've got the engine out. Not that it would make a, a huge difference, but sometimes it does, because then you can reach across without being obstructed by anything. Get these wheels and tires off of here. And, we're yeah, we're dealing with some worn-out brakes here. Get the caliper off. Pads out of here. Brake disc. Get that bearing out of there. And our hub. Get this upper control arm out of here. Get out of here, shocks. And then, or shock. Oh, yep, we want to take care of this front end link B. Lower suspension arm there. And, we, oh, yep, we need to take care of the tie rods. And we can take the knuckle out of here. All right, on to the other side. Okay, then we'll take off our front sway bar and our steering rack. Hopefully we will be able to repair that. And this looks so good. Again, this mod is modeled so well. Just really has that stock car, cup car look. To it. All right. And we were able to repair the rack, which is fantastic. First, let me clear my parts notes here from the engine. And take a look at what we have here. Get down here to where the suspension stuff starts, which would be right here. So caliper, obviously we need brake pads, brake disc ventilated. Wheel hub cap. I'm going to buy all that stuff in doubles. Wheel bearing. Rubber bushing. Front end link B. Yeah, all the regular stuff. All right, shopping spree complete. Now we can go ahead. Actually, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to take our shocks apart. Separate parts. And yeah, we're going to need to replace those parts for sure. There we go. We got the parts we needed to put our front spring, uh, front suspension, front shocks together. My goodness, can't talk and can't remember how to play the game. <laughs> oh man, it has been a little while. Thank you guys for being patient. Come on now. There we go. Now we can take it. Get going over here. Let us put. Our front sway bar first, get that taken care of, and then we can put our engine steering rack, sorry, engine, I'm seeing an engine, inner tie rod, outer, oh, we don't have our knuckle yet, do we? Then our outer tie rod, there we go. Cinch you down, get this bottom suspension arm with our rubber bushings. It's always nice when the nice new shiny parts are going in. Front end link B. Let's see, upper suspension. There we are. Upper suspension arm, I guess they call it. And we'll be able to get our hub in here. Do the Bob Ross happy little Get our happy little wheel bearing in there. Our happy little hub cap. Brake does ventilated. New brake pads. We can do our calipers, and then we're gonna need to do something with the wheels and tires. So we're not gonna worry about those just yet. And 
Yep, there it is, asking for it. So I think that's everything on that side. We are good to go with the other. Okay. That all looks good there. Front suspension taken care of. You know what's next. Let's get the rear tire out of here. Rear wheel tire combo. And what are we working with here? Disc brakes? As I figured we would be. Actually, let me grab this battery out of here. I'm gonna go put it on the charger. Let that thing charge while we continue doing our teardown. Oh, not that. There we go. Big old rusty <laughs> brake disc there. Get that out of here. Solid drive axle. Such a simple but proven setup, especially on circle track cars. This is not a full-on circle track setup. Usually you'd have sway bar and uh, a lot of fanciness back here. But this is close. This works. This is all based off of what it is, so. Get our solid axle control arm there, shock absorber. And we'll get our spring taken care of. And that pretty much does it for that side. On to the other side. Oh, well, they actually modeled in a track bar. Look at this. Oh, that is so cool. And then they modeled in... Okay, I see what this is. Yeah, it's all modeled in, guys. This is such a good mod. I am impressed. That is awesome. And now we can take the whole axle housing out. I'm going to go ahead and pull this fuel pump and fuel tank. Okay, I had to go back and check to give credit where credit is due. This mod was created by Dead Bob 777 Dead Bob 777 Incredible job, brother. This is a really, really good mod. Uh, I'll be sure to give you credit. All right, here we go. Let's get our axle housing in there. Then we can get our wheel hub. Our solid drive axle. And brake disc. Such a simple yet effective rear end. Brake caliper. And we need to get our spring situation going here. There we go. And the cap, as well as our absorber. Get you in there. Solid axle control arm with our rubber bushing. That should do it. And again, we're not going to worry about wheels and tires at the moment. Okay, on to the other side. Okay, that's going to do it there. I'm going to put in the fuel tank and our performance fuel pump. There we go. Very nice. So let's get on the wheels and tires. Let's pull those apart. Separate. There we go. Yes. And what I plan to do with these is just go ahead and restore the rims and paint them if they are restorable. Because uh, I do want to use the black rims that they used then and still use. For the time being, they're going to change it up, what, next year or the year after. All right, rims are repaired. Let's go ahead and paint that rim, we will paint it black. There we go, we got one rim painted. Go on to the next one. There we go, all tires, or all wheels painted. Time to, I said tires because I'm thinking about tires. Time to buy some tires. They are 15s, 305s. Oh, 305, profile 55. $8,976 in tires. Race tires, I tell you. It'll be interesting to see if we make a profit on this car. 
All right, let's put the let's get these tires mounted balanced. There we go. Now I went with matte because they didn't have the regular gloss, like the regular typical gloss that you would have on a cup car. Uh, they have metallic, pearl, and chrome, which none of that really looked right. So matte is the closest than to just gloss. It'd be cool if you could do a clear coat option over the matte, but then I guess really what's the point? Other than if you don't want metallic for everything. Because then that'd be able to give you just the regular base, you know, regular unmetallic, pearled, or chromed base coat, and then you could just clear coat over it if you wanted to. That's an idea. Okay, they are they are all mounted and balanced. Let's go ahead and install. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Definitely looks better than rusty chrome-ish that it was. Much better. I'm going to go over here to the custom gearbox and get a custom gearbox for this because we're, we're going to be making way more power than uh, it did before, and I think we're just going to end up running through those gears way too quickly. And I don't think a four-speed gearbox with the power we're about to make will really work. But we will see. But I just know, I have a feeling it's going to need a custom gearbox. There you are. A custom gearbox for this thing. Let us get our engine installed. That would, that would be very helpful. This thing is just so cool. Man, that looks cool. <laughs> I really dig that. Take our engine. All right, nope, didn't want to do that. There we go, off the stand. And install, there we go, install it into the car, and then that can go right back. Oh, that looks good in there. That looks really good in there. While I'm here, let's throw some oil in it. Okay, we're good there. Let's get this thing up in the air. Go check our battery, see if that's done charging. Grab it off the stand here, or the charger. And install. Yep, 100%. I like that. And we are good to go here for installing our flywheel and clutch setup. Performance clutch. Our performance pressure plate and then our throw up bearing they call it a release bearing and we will want to do our this is not our custom gearbox you guys might have saw while I was rambling I accidentally bought the wrong gearbox <laughs> the tunable gearbox so I will have a loss there for sure because I paid 3,000 let's see what it's let's see what it's worth uh, to sell 1500 yeah, so I lost 1500 bucks there for uh, not paying attention, just for rambling. That's what I get. All right, let's mount the correct gearbox. There we go. You win some, you lose some. Let's get the starter installed. And we can put on our drive shaft. And around here. There we go. And then I want to put in our exhaust. There we go. That looks so good. So good. I forgot some stuff back here. There it is. <laughs> there we go. Let me get our leaf spring. That's got to mount somehow, right? You guys probably caught it as I was just flying through the refill of this rear end. Yep, I forgot the leaf spring U-bolts and the leaf spring spring plate. I think that should do it. Let's check here. There we go. All 100%. Very nice. Now comes the fun part. We're going to paint this thing. Let's move you 
to paint shop. All right, let's see what we got here. We got livery options. Oh, oh man. That is the a City Chevrolet Colt Trickle car from Days of Thunder. A movie I definitely grew up on. And I think every gearhead might have. Unless you just really hate NASCAR. And there is the, uh, well, it was the, it was in real life run by Kyle Petty, but Cole Trickle ran this in the movie as well. There's the Super Flow car. This is so cool. This is bringing back a flood of memories. That's for sure. Oh, there's, there's Dale. Good old Dale. Oh, and there's the Tide car. Is this Ricky Rudd or is this, that's Daryl Waltrip's, duh, number 17. That's nice. And then we've got, oh, that's from, uh, yeah, the Sega game. I played that a bunch too. What was that called? Put it in the comments if you remember the name of that game. It was on arcade. It was, I played it in the arcade and then I ended up getting it on, I can't remember what console. Uh, this is a Folgers car. Is that Tim Richmond? Can't tell. It was very cool though that this stuff is modeled in. There's the Russ Wheeler Hardys, number 18. Man, this is a tough one. And then we've got Rowdy Burns, 51. And then some sort of interesting livery there. And back to Primer. Well, this is a tough one, guys, because I really want to do that one because I loved the City Chevrolet car in the movie. But also, I mean, you got to do it for Dale. There it is. I mean, come on. I want to do both. So I'm going to end up doing both. I want to drive it as the Cold Trickle car. And then I want to drive it as the, uh, and, and then end up selling it as the Dale Earnhardt. Let's move it to the dyno. See what we did. See what kind of numbers we have made. Man, that looks so good. It's, it just reminds me of the movie. Let me crouch down. Oh, yeah. Like the cinematic shots they would get. Oh, I love it. Let us run our dyno. Proceed with the dyno test. Yes. Again, remember factory power was 665 horsepower over 856 pound feet of torque. Let's see what we made. We did throw a pretty good amount of performance parts at it. Pretty much everything I could. 1,126 horsepower, 1,431 pound feet of torque. It's a very good thing we've got slicks. But, uh, man, I love this. We will see. <laughs> we will see if it can uh, handle it. Look at that. It's like walking into the race shop. Oh, we got to have the hood up in the, the trunk up for that, for that look. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I'm just geeking out over this, guys. My apologies. Don't mind me. I'm going to move it over to the garage entrance A. <laughs> you know what I want to do is I want to keep the car. I really do. Ah, it's just, it brings back so many memories. Let's take a look at what the stock gearbox is going to be. It is going to be a four speed. We're going to run out of that real quick. Let's go ahead and take it up to six. I know it's sacrilege for, we're going to end up putting it back at four. Uh, let's start out four. Let's see what it does at four. We're definitely going to be needing to, because even so, I mean, these things run, let's say 202, because back in the late 80s, early 90s, they were running faster than they do now. Let's see if we can get something like this to work well. Let's attempt that. Let's take it out to the a speed test track. Speed track, there we go. See if we can hit that 202. Here we are inside of, let's go outside. Oh, it launches like a rocket. Oh man, I love this thing so much. Yeah, it is climbing. I mean, it handled that very well. It's a pretty decent tune. And it tops out at 202. Yeah, it gets to 202, and then it falls down. So we could go with a 5-speed. 
Let's do that. It's got enough power and it's got enough torque that it's not bogging anything down, that's for sure. We'll add that fifth gear. Again, I know, sacrilege. On one of these, I will be putting it back down to a four speed. I'm just curious what we can get out of it. Let's go with five gears. <laughs> 1,538 miles per hour. Don't think that's going to be working. Let's try. Well, let's, let's just put it there and see what happens. We're not going to get to 300, but we'll see what it does. Ah, oh, this thing is just amazing. I love it so much. And off it goes. Bounce it off the limiter a little there. Not like we weren't already doing that off the start line. Okay, we're going to be shifting into fifth. And that's pretty bogged. Getting to 20210. 220. 225. Oh, and then we're just going to go ahead and pretend like that didn't happen. Let's uh, change that gear ratio just a little bit more so it's not as bogged to give it a better chance to kind of climb through that final gear a little better. All right, here we go. It takes off so good. Up to 100. Third gear, fourth gear. And we are going to f fifth gear. That's much better. Two fifteen, sixteen, two twenty, two thirty. <laughs> That's uh, two hundred thirty. Not bad at all. Cold trickle. Having some fun at the airport. It is squirrely, as to be expected. But pretty responsive. <laughs> this is just too fun. You can kind of drift the thing just a little, yeah. Not as much as uh, I'd like to. So cool. Just the look of it. Bounce it off the limiter. There we go. All right. That's fun. Back in the paint shop to do what we must do. To do what has to be done to raise hail and praise Dale. There we go. Right there. We walk out to our beautiful Intimidator. Number three, good wrenched Lumina. Oh, it's so good. I love the red interior. Of course, we had to run the, the Dale scheme at the uh, airport, too, just to be fair. Nice. One final donut. This is a fun car. I really enjoy this car. I'm on the fence of whether to keep it or not. <laughs> Let's look at it here. The car value is $68,616 with a restoration bonus of 13723 which gives me a total of $82,339 in value. If I was to sell it right now, I would get $82,339, which would put our bank account at $824,676, which ain't going to happen because I'm hanging on to this one, guys. This is going in the collection because why wouldn't it? I am in love. So let's find out what profit I would have made. I bought the car for $35,000. I put $21,351 into parts and performance parts and whatnot. And then the value of the car is $82,339. So that gives me a net profit of $60,988. So let's call it $61,000 would be the profit if I was to sell this car. But it is not going anywhere. Guys, thank you. Thank you so much for all your support. It's been a true pleasure. I truly, truly appreciate it. I mean it. I mean it. I really do. Guys, your support is amazing, and it means the world to me. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed, enjoy or enjoyed the Daytona 500. If you watched it, this was a nice little special for today, being the running 
of the Daytona 500. Guys, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. I know I say it a lot, but it's true. And don't forget to leave a like or a thumbs up. It lets me know you care. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you in the next one.